just um, welcome everybody. Welcome to um, uh, the, the second in a four series talk at the, at the moment um, that we are running with the Independent School Show to talk about um, the, the, the big issues in education full stop, but a lot of them obviously are at the moment looking at some of the, the more unusual issues that have come up um, as a result of COVID-19, the lockdown, the school closures, the exam cancellations and so forth. And today um, we are going to be looking at reception and nursery admissions in the current climate. And we're extremely lucky and, and grateful to be joined by um, Lucinda Byron Evans from Young England Nursery in Pimlico, London, and Sebastian Heifer, headmaster at Eaton Square, Belgravia. Um, both of them giving their insight from their particular uh, expertise. So um, Lucinda will be talk talking to us about the the effect on nurseries. Obviously, their closures have been pretty pretty immediate and severe, and quite a difficult crowd to to educate across the internet. I imagine at that age. So we'll look forward to some stories of how that has or hasn't gone from Lucinda. Um, and for Sebastian, hopefully, we're we'll looking at you know how how particularly his school um, uh, and schools within his group are dealing with uh, reception entry for the upcoming cohort, not, not least um, the following year's one, whose, whose process has you know, start, been starting a while. Because the issue being the admissions processes uh, in London particularly do, do go on for a, a good few years for nursery, for, for reception entry school. Um, and therefore, it's not just 2020 entrants that have been um, interrupted. In fact, their interruptions are probably less so even than, than those for 2021 who are still very much an ongoing cohort and have got various things in their processes coming up in the autumn term particularly uh, at many many schools and nurseries that that are quite important and there will be a big concern amongst parents as to how those are being managed and and, and really just ensuring like us all all us parents that they're not going to be at any disadvantage i think the main thing i would like to say before handing over to the to the experts is um Oh, I give myself a bit of background for those of you that, that, that haven't joined us before. I'm Will Petty and from Bonus McFarlane where we uh, specialise in uh, school placements both in um, the UK and mainland Europe um, and higher education by university and college placement in the UK and the US and we do everything from, from nursery school right through to, to sixth form university. Um, and postgraduates. Um, we also have a, a specialist private tuition company and we, uh, our sister company is the Independent School Show, which is um, the guys in which we're, we're here today. Um, what we've seen really is, is the fact that while schools have closed, whilst um, extraordinary things, necessary things have had to be done with the public examinations for those of you with, with older children, the one thing that hasn't changed um, is the admissions processes. Uh, with all this uncertainty, we're all feeling it. It's something. It's a phrase I've been saying a lot to all sorts of um, uh, colleagues and, 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 and families, clients of ours, which is, you know, we are slightly all in, in, in the same boat. So don't forget that the schools are having a really tough time in dealing with this as well as, as, well as parents, as well as the children. Um, and one of the things that all the uncertainty that this awful pandemic has brought and the measures that have come with it um, all that uncertainty affects everybody and obviously if you're a school you're worried about parents feeling uncertain and your ability to be open your ability to function at full capacity and obviously that has a massive financial worry for all schools they're not it's not you know coca-cola the margins are very fine and um, you know the one thing that they can't risk is not having students um, going forward because because you know they haven't been able to plow on with their admissions processes. Now what we've seen in all age groups and schools is the admissions processes have remained 100% active and 100% open. What's happening is changes are being put in place so that they can continue and so we're here really to, to hopefully, I mean I'm, I'm premeditating what Lucinda and Sebastian are going to say next which is a bit of, bit of a high risk but hopefully we're here to, to for us parents to get um, some reassurance to feel sort of reassured um, if our parents aren't currently in school or about to make a big change from nursery to, to reception that everything's going to be okay and that the schools are you know going to make sure that um, as far as your child is concerned in terms of arriving at school once they're opened that it will be as it was in any other year um, and that the, the, the other really tough measures and uh, restrictions being placed on schools are not affecting those admissions processes and that they're doing a fantastic job of 
carrying on and finding the right students to fit, fit their communities and making sure that they're welcomed and, and, and happy from day one. Um, we will throughout with the questions, please, please do submit them via, via the tab as I've mentioned. And also um, uh, you can do that throughout, but we're not gonna answer any until, um, until towards the, the end of the three talks. So without banging on any more, because I'm the least interesting person here, uh, we're gonna go up in chronological order. So Lucinda, thank you again for, for joining us. Lucinda from Young England, who's gonna just start things off with a brief sort of talk about um, what her nursery are doing particularly, but, but generally um, the situation for nursery schools and feeding into to reception. So thank you, Lucinda. Thank you, Will. Um, I'm just going to share, put the slides up. Um, so as you said, Will, we're um, a nursery situated in Pimlico and we're an independent nursery school uh, catering for children from two to five, so pre-reception. Uh, um, during the lockdown, we were forced to close on the 20th of March, along with all the other schools, and then we're faced with the mammoth task of trying to devise an online teaching programme for our children um, to ensure that their learning and development was able to continue. Uh, we tried to devise a way of doing this that was as interactive as possible. Um, we decided to use the Seesaw Class app, uh, which is a platform that enables pupil and teacher engagement remotely each teacher set up an account for the children in their class and then used creative tools to take pictures, drawings, um, record videos and uploaded activities for the children to complete. The children then would complete them at home and then there would be a dialogue between the teacher and uh, the children and their parents. Uh, these included phonics sessions, they did some cooking activities with them, uh, number and shape activities and counting and matching activities. Uh, there was really positive feedback from this. The parents, I think, particularly enjoyed the fact that we, the teachers were able to do verbal comments every time a child um, did an activity at home that got uploaded, the teacher could um, verbally comment on how they th thought it went. Um, it's a really interactive, uh, impressive app. Um, in addition to that, we also, um, the teachers would hold two class Zoom sessions a week, which would either be a show and tell session or them reading a story to them. Uh, this gave the children the chance to see their friends and interact with them, albeit remotely. Uh, lastly, we decided to offer one-to-one -one Zoom sessions, um, which enabled the teacher to offer each child individual support and teaching, uh, bearing in mind that these children are all at very different levels. It also gave the parent parents a chance to share any concerns that they had um, and to ask any questions that they had about their child's learning. We found that once the children had got used to communicating on online they actually responded pretty well um, a few of them did find it a bit of an alien experience at the beginning but then they um, settled into it uh, then on the 1st of uh, June we were lucky enough to be able to reopen for those children whose parents wished them to return we had to um, do an extremely extensive risk assessment which was set out by our local authority um, where a lot of thought had gone into um, how we were going to keep our staff children and parents safe. Uh, we had about 50% of children wanting to come back on the 1st of June, which meant that we still had 50% at home. So we had decided to have two teachers remaining at home so they could continue with the online distance learning program. Then we had the remaining four teachers at school on site teaching here. By the end of term, we hope to have about, we, we think we'll have about 75% of children back at school. We found that the children returned to school, who have returned to school did so seamlessly and without distress. We were worried as we've had to implement so many um, uh, changes to comply with the gov government regulations, including separating the children into two sections. So uh, um, we've, we're lucky we are in a really large hall. So we've been able to separate the hall using partitions. So each group um, can only have up to 15 in each group. It's called a bubble system. And those groups don't mix uh, at all. Um, they don't mix resources, they don't mix anything, so we've been able to do that quite successfully. Uh, they've seemed to adapt very quickly. Children um, always amaze me at how adaptable they are um, in situations like this. Um, they've just been thrilled to see their friends, uh, been able to socialise again. Um, the other difference is that we're actually extending our term by 10 days and going through until the 17th of July uh, to enable the children to have a bit more time at school. 
The next thing um, that the one aspect raised, as Will said, a lot of concern is the transition. So transitions for children moving on from us in July to their next schools. This is something that's also been recognised by the local authority um, and they've given it much thought and created a detailed transition report form. Um, this, uh, which each teacher will fill in and will go on to their next schools. This is an extensive form that contains key information, uh, including the assessments within each areas of learning, uh, the styles in which the children learn, the, any useful information that the key teacher thinks would support their transition, and we also get comments from the parents too, which of course is important seeing as they spent so much time at home. Uh, in addition to this, the teachers will complete our usual leavers report for each child. Um, the only difference is that we have sl slightly changed the format this year to focus more on the child's character, their gen general, general disposition at school. Um, and if we have any particular concerns, we'll be arranging telephone consultations with the next schools so that we can talk about any additional needs that the children may have. Uh, we're also focusing a lot on transition here at school. Um, we are doing this by having regular circle times with the children to talk about things they may be anxious about starting school, thing, worries they may have, concerns and um, issues that maybe uh, need to discuss. We look at the school's website so um, to look at the pictures and hopefully maybe find a picture of the child's new teacher or the name if we know it. Um, we talk to them about their visit to the school. Most of them will have gone for an assessment. So we talk to them about what they remember, what the uniform looked like, um, the toys that they might have played with. And then on the last day of term, we were hope we usually get the children to come in dressed in their, norm in their new school uniform. However, I'm told that this year, new school uniform has been quite difficult to get hold of. So we may reconsider that um, and just look at websites to look at the uniforms instead. Um, but we will be setting up a school's role play area as well to, um, so we can get them used to registering in a, in a big school environment. Uh, we also send home a document, a transitions document, ideas on um, how the parents can support their children through the summer. Uh, these include using the bathroom independently, allowing them to put their coat on and off, showing, um, showing them their uniform when they get it, practicing putting that on, and uh, to continue with play dates throughout the summer if they can, um, and possibly to try and uh, get in touch with any new parents who've got children starting so that they can form relationships before they start at school, uh, and also reading books around starting school. We've, um, I've also been trying to gather a bit of information from uh, schools from the next stage on as to what they're doing differently and a few of them got back to me saying that the main difference is of course they can't have their new children teas which I know lots of schools have um, and a lot of the parents rely on those for making those links with new children and parents so they, as some of them have said they're going to try and do virtual tours of the classroom, um, get the new teachers to read them stories on uh, virtually and also to try and arrange the class reps earlier on so that they can set up play dates in the summer. Um, above all, we just try and instill a sense of excitement around starting school um, and to remain positive and upbeat about it. Uh, assessments for reception 2021. I've had quite a few parents over the last few weeks uh, with concern over these upcoming assessments. A lot of the children, if they're going for their co-ed school assessments, or boys will be assessed um, next term and they seem to be earlier and earlier. So what we've tried to do this term for the children that will be going for their assessments is to focus um, on their communication and language skills. We're trying to encourage them to speak out in a group, get them to um, listen, understand questions uh, and instru two part instructions. Uh, for the children at Zoom at, at home, we're continuing to do Zoom sessions one to one to try and encourage their communication skills. Uh, we're doing lots of name recognition, name writing, and building on their confidence. Uh, we'll be putting extra detail into our reference forms for each child. Um, when they go for their assessments, we often write reference forms for each child, and we'll be doing putting more detail into these and also following up with a telephone consultation again if we feel it necessary. Uh, we'll be writing end of year reports for the parents uh, in which there will be a next step so the children can, uh, the parents can see what they can work on with their children throughout the summer. Uh, lastly, our admissions, um, as Will said, the admissions are still has to have to be carry, carrying on. Um, 
we've uh, actually had a lot, still had a lot of interest throughout this time. The only uh, main difference is, of course, we like to get our parents in to show them around, uh, which we haven't been able to do. We've been offering them uh, Zoom sessions so we can do virtual tours with them. Uh, and the other difference is that for our children that are starting in 2021, we are allowing the delay in the deposit um, until they've actually seen the school in person. So for our children starting in April next year, for example. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it. Wonderful, Lucinda. Thank you very much. You gave me no warning there as to me switching off my mute button and suddenly panic. <laughs> um, um, uh, that was extremely detailed and, and, and really practical. And I actually, I'd, I hadn't thought about um, just that really solid practical advice that you, you put in there for, for our parents. And I know the majority of attendees would be thrilled to, to, to have. And it might seem a little obvious if, if you are in education or early years, but you know, that, that communication and keeping that going and not sort of, uh, and, and the really tough one, of course, until recently, although things are easier a little bit with the easing of the lockdown, but is, is that peer to peer interaction. Yeah. Um, I can't remember who told me, but a, a long time ago, early on in my days in education uh, as an industry, someone sort of pointed out that what you, what you forget about as a child is yes, you know, being, hearing mummy and daddy and your teacher speak in that sort of more grown up way is vital. But almost mm -hmm. as important is the is the peer to peer language learning that you get and you seeing each other's mistakes and you know that's yeah. all of them sadly are missing. I speak as a as a dad of five year old twins, so um, oh. you know if anything, I think my son might have gone backwards quite a bit. He doesn't seem to <laughs> be able to communicate at all with me now. But um. I think the good thing about young children is they are they are so adaptable and it takes them they're, they're very quick to get back on track. And uh, I think we've yeah. seen such an imp in, in, our children have been about two weeks and. They're already so it's as if, as if they're never gone. You know, they're they're already back to um, socialising, chatting to each other, and it, yeah, it's been really lovely to see. Yeah, it's, it must be quite a luxury not having that very acute sense of time that you gain as an adult, where it's just quite painful. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Lucinda, and and, and and whoever whoever's responsible for the gruffalo in the background needs a serious <laughs> gold star. That's <laughs> really quite something. It was something. a team effort. It was a bit of a team effort from our older <laughs> children. <laughs> um, Thank you very much. So um, with that, we'll move on to, to Sebastian and who's going to, to talk from, from his point of view as a head of a pre-prep slash prep school um, that, and very much sort of a, a complimentary to, to the topics with a slightly altered age group that Lucinda covered. So Sebastian, thank you again for joining us and, um, and please, please fire away when you're ready. Yeah, pleasure. Well, welcome. Lovely to be with you all this morning. Thanks for the, for the invitation. Um, much of what we've just heard the, the nursery schools and prep schools within Eaton Square have, have, have followed a very similar pathway. Um, but I think above all else, the, our approach to the whole lockdown period has been uh, to try and keep to as normal an existence as possible, which I know is a difficult thing, or easy thing to say, but a difficult thing perhaps to, to put into practice. But we really have, have strived to do that. Um, and do that through our remote learning and teaching over the last few few months through this term and indeed into the summer. Um, it's been very successful, but I think there's a de definite correlation. And uh, Will mentioning your 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 twin boys who are five years old. I mean, there's there. I think the younger the children are, the the harder the families and children have found the remote learning that they've been they've been given. The, the older the children have been the more effective it's been uh, and one can we can certainly track that through our, our nursery's reception into year eight nine ten and and, and eleven um, but the curriculum we've delivered has been very effective it's, it's it's maintained its breadth and and it has been stimulating um, academic academic subjects for all online uh, the class groups have worked very well one-to-one uh, -one has been offered where necessary uh, which has also worked well um, we've continued with the with the rhythm and the ebb and flow of, of school life really. So full school assemblies have been given every week, which normally we'd hold in um, at St. Michael's Church, but we've obviously done that remotely. Um, we've been awarding prizes as, as usual through that process, uh, uh, sending the prizes out to the families so they, they come through the letterbox rather than uh, handing them out in assembly. Um, sports provision has been there in a, in a diluted and different form, but nevertheless enjoyable music lessons as well. So the curriculum has been very much kind of um, held together and intact, even though we've been remote. Um, and of course, what we can't forget is, is, is the well-being of, of the pupils, which is absolutely vital. Um, and as you've just intimated really well, the, the, 
the lack of interaction with with peer group as well as with staff but with peer group i'm sure has been very telling and certainly my own four children i've got we've been uh, in lockdown with um each of them i think hit hit a hit a wall at a different time in this process really and i think the main thing they were missing was was that interaction with their with their peers um and so we we've kept place to be which is our well-being uh, support program and service and they've been in touch with pupils and families that that have, have reached out and wanted to to get in touch with them um and that side it's been vital that we've kept that going as we have it in school but even though we've been working remotely um all meetings have continued as well actually so um pta meetings leadership meetings coffee mornings um again trying to, to create maintain that that feeling of school being in in process school being normal opportunity for dialogue uh and again i think that's been a very successful uh part of our, our program um we've even had pupils delivering ted talks to, to other parents and children from other schools which is which is fantastic um but before we reopened uh, as you've heard actually quite similar you know very thorough risk assessments were put in place uh we opened up the classrooms we were able to. Uh, we, we're lucky enough to be in, in lovely buildings actually where we can, we can open up two classrooms into one, which has created larger teaching spaces and that has worked very well. Um, we've, we've kept the numbers as uh, below 15 in a class group. Uh, there are two staff per group of 15 who only are with that group of 15 throughout. Um, and, and that's their bubble and nobody else can kind of penetrate or break into that bubble and again that seems to have worked very effectively before we did that we went through a long process of uh, surveying parents surveying staff um, trying to work out uh, where the issues may be which would which would, would be uh, problematic um, and we managed to i think iron out any any wrinkles and creases before we all came back on the first of june um, Communication with parents has been vital uh, throughout the lockdown process, but equally, I think, more vital before the return, where there were undoubtedly anxieties and um, questions which parents had. And talking to a dad yesterday, actually, on the, on the steps, um, he was saying how well that, that side was, was handled by, by the team, which is fantastic, actually. I think the parents really needed clarity. Uh, and once they had that clarity and surety, uh, they were happy, very happy to, to come back into, in, into school. Um, the spacings and the markings on the floor that you see, you see out and about, no doubt, when you go shopping are now in school. Uh, look, look a, bit, a bit odd, but uh, necessary. Um, although working with young children, clearly they, they kind of keep to those as much as, as, much as they can. Uh, the catering side, again, fully briefed uh, and working really well to provide food in a safe fashion for the children. Um, in fact, the dining hall is one of our largest spaces, so that works very effectively. And the deep cleans, pre-opening, we've increased the cleaning during the day. We have housekeepers on all sites now all day uh, cleaning down the areas to making sure it's, it, it, it's, it's as clear and clean as it can be. Um, if I just share with you uh what we what we delivered to our to our our parents before we opened so we went through the whole return to school process as you can see and very clearly laid out to the parents what we would be doing and how we would we would be opening going through the cleaning process i think that was one of the main areas that parents had concerns about um, we we take temperatures before all of, the, of all the children before they enter and all staff and we do it again during the day um, looking at social distancing we try to reassure parents that we would keep to that as much as we possibly could that was one key area that came back from these surveys quite a few parents were asking about ppe and personal protection whether their children were allowed to wear masks etc so we clarify that for them to make sure there were no gray areas um, and talked about the well-being of the pupils as i've said before when they were at school and at home um, taking temperatures on entry as you can see uh, social distancing on the pavement which works with limited numbers um, i'm sure all heads all parents are asking what's going to happen when the entire pupil body returns but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it 
lessons going on in larger spaces opened out, but also using um, a combination of in-school teaching and also online teaching because we have a number of parents and families who couldn't come back because they're abroad. So that's how we've kind of gone about that side. Um, in, in relation to the percentage of students being at school, we had currently, we currently have 50% of pupils who, who are back. Um, and that's for a variety of reasons, really. But the main reason is that a large number of our parents, we are fairly international with where we're based in the centre of London. Uh, a large number are, are, did not lock down in, in London and, um, and for them to come back for the remainder of the summer term was, was thought to be too much for them to do. Uh, however, looking ahead, year five uh, started back today and um, we have 85% of year five coming back, which is quite telling. Um, that, as you know, is the pre-11 plus year group um, and the year group where undoubtedly, <clears throat> excuse me, we've had more questions than any other year group about return, when are you coming back and, and what's going to be happening. And I suspect we'll talk more to that a little bit later. Um, in practice, everything's working very well now that the pupils are back. Um, they were chomping at the bit to come back. We saw that day one um <clears throat> to see their teachers of course but to see their their friends um <clears throat> the distancing is working very well indeed and the pupil bubbles <clears throat> excuse me are also working very well um and we have the space and capacity to open up more units more bubbles if we need to do that currently september uh, all schools will need to look very closely at how effectively they can return the whole school body and that's something that all of us are awaiting government advice on. Um, for looking at the joiners into reception in 2020, um, when we heard how well uh, Young England are, are looking after their existing year group, we're we making that transition. Equally for, for prep schools, we, we are we are the other end of it. We're, we're receiving these these pupils in, and normally we would have gone through. Um, a very thorough process but in essence the main point of that process is is to is for the pupils to get to know who's going to be in their class for parents to see the other parents uh, so those contacts and, this, and and friendships can begin to develop um, and to get a sense of the school because any transition from nursery into into reception or indeed actually from from year six into year seven brings brings anxieties for the pupils and so the best way to get over that is to have that 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 regular contact and and physically be within a school setting now of course we we're in a situation this this year where we're not able to do that so much um so at eaton square we w can see parents and have offered it to, to prospective parents to bring them into the school after hours where they can come come around the school again and see the class that they may be may be going into um, we're having Zoom meetings for all new parents to really to, to substitute that, that coming together physically, which we would normally do. The pupils will be involved in that as well as they can be as well. Um, the teachers will be Zooming meetings with, with their, their prospective families and, and pupils with Q&A sessions. Again, getting to know them, familiar face and making sure that, that the questions are, are, are removed and taken away. The usual welcome packs are, are going out, so that's, that's, that's something that's easy to do, um, with, but with ideas for the summer break and how to prepare the children for their return, having had this, this, this gap, really, in, in, their, in their process. Um, virtual tour of the building um, is, is available as well for them to see if they can't come in, which some of them can't come in. And when we do start in September, we will have a very um, staggered starting process in order that the children can come in gently um, <clears throat> and not feel in any way, I think, kind of overwhelmed by the process, but coming in small groups, settling into the classroom and the next one coming in. Uh, that will take longer, but I think in this particular instance, it's absolutely worth, worth the time spent. Um, and a welcome party we've currently got penciled in for the 2nd of September for pupils um, in their bubbles, which they'll be in when they come back the following day. And we can do that outside, weather permitting, and that, that, should, that should work well. Um, looking ahead to 2021, of course, um, 
as as you intimated, Will. This is a, a relatively new new process in in, in as much as that um, we would always have the components we will continue with. So we would have a report from the head of the nursery school. Uh, we would meet with the parents and we would have an assessment morning. Now we can assess the children remotely uh, and the parents uh, just through conversation and, and I think having getting an idea and sense that way. We can do it after school uh, again when the rest of the school has has left um, and we're looking at doing that increased staffing from our perspective but worth doing in order that we we, we assure the parents and, and, and have that contact with them and we get to know the children. But really the most important part of the whole process, which in many ways it always is, but in this particular year, I think is more, more evident, is the report from, from the nursery school head, um, whether the head writes it or the class teacher writes it, um, whoever knows that child the best out of that team, that report is absolutely crucial. And this year, as I say, more than ever before. So that will, that, part will be the most vital bit of the process for September 21 entry and I think with those components in place we will see actually we will see it work we'll see it work well um, from Eaton Square and the parents should be should be reassured by that. Looking at the other end of prep school life um, obviously our parents and parents across the land but particularly in London parents of year five pupils are are very concerned I think about what's perceived as a missed term of teaching even though the online provision that, that we've given I know has been fantastic and first rate in terms of the components for that 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 11 plus process and I'm sure other prep schools have done so as well but nevertheless the parents feel that they've not been in school and therefore they've not had the same journey that all of the years have had in the past um, and so we can do the best we can and we feel we've done that and really the I think the onus moves from the prep schools onto onto the senior schools who are receiving the boys and girls through the 11 plus process um, I sit on the 11 plus working group which we will be meeting next week uh, to discuss um, just this really uh, IAPS will be there in terms of my, my, my presence, GDSD, HMC, um, and other independent schools who, are, who, who run their own entry processes at 11 plus. Um, through that meeting, we will hope, if nothing else, I think, just to get a sense of, of what will happen for our current year fives as they go into year six, as they go through the November ISEB pretests, so they go through the January uh, 11 pluses and to see whether the senior schools are, are reacting, whether they're going to be uh, understanding and sympathetic to the last few months, which I'm sure they will be, but whether that manifests itself in a change to the actual exams themselves is, is a question which remains open, but hopefully we'll have a little bit more clarity uh, in, in a week's time. But I do think that in terms of reassuring parents in, in year, five as, as, as a prep school ourselves we are we're confident that um, our preparation to date has been very thorough and when we come back in September it will continue to be so um, there'll be a booster session at the end as we move through the end of this term and at the beginning of next term but as there as there always is for the year fives going into year six so nothing new there really um, so I, I, I honestly believe that the prep schools, from their perspective, will have done a fantastic job uh, of preparing. And indeed, the, the, the local primary schools will have been focusing very much on that, I'm sure, uh, for year five entry, uh, year five transition to year six before they do their 11 pluses. But we await uh, further information from the senior schools themselves. And I think that that will be the, the, the missing piece in the puzzle at the minute. Um, so that's me. Uh, I'll hand back to you, Will. Thanks so much, Sebastian. Fantastic. Very, very informative. And I think um, it would be very reassuring, particularly, and thank you for sharing the, 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 the images of, of how, how your school are coping with it. Um, whilst we think about the admissions, of course, uh, which would be a concern for, for lots of our, our viewers, also one, one forgets, perhaps um, in my position at any rate, you know, the, the concerns... Um, not to do with education so much, but to do with, you know, 
uh, the, the health situation and putting our children back in to, to that situation. And particularly for those who've got, you know, elderly relatives they'd like to see often or, or even at home. So um, it, it, it's a tough time for, for everyone, but it's wonderful to see that, that Eaton Square and, and, and Young England are, are finding their way and, and, and getting such high percentages uh, of their pupils back in. It's really, really great stuff. Um, and the, with the sort of um, admission side of things, I think, uh, obviously, you actually went around and described it uh, away a little bit, because on you know, necessarily you call these four plus, we all call the four plus um, interviews or whatever, assessments. But actually, you, you just sort of said that really that's about the communication, talking to the parents. So I think that will calm quite a lot of parents down, um, knowing that, you know, that's more of a, a formality rather than a kind of huge you know watershed in their admissions process because obviously that's something that's been wildly disabled or or, or, or made much much tougher in this situation now um we seem to i seem to have lost lucinda um guy are you there can you well either way oh here he is yeah we, guy we have lost her unfortunately i i we'll see if we can get her back <laughs> okay, I'll leave that to you, and, and Sebastian and I will crack on with some, some questions. Um, so, I mean, off the back of that, Sebastian, one of the questions, I think we really answered it, was how do you assess children for, for reception? Um, but I'm right in saying that your message is, that, you know, there's a little bit online with parents and, and perhaps the child, but the rest of it's really, you know, going back to the old school and, and looking at the nursery heads reference, which I suppose many parents... Um, until now might not have realized how important that stage is when they're applying to schools with an in-person assessment because they you know they can tan they can see that bit so they, they obviously probably automatically place more importance onto it but you, you were saying that the, the nursery head and that reference really is is the key and presumably would you say that's more so at the moment or, or you're trying I, to balance it? I, I think it I think well it probably depends on each um, each individual prep school actually how where, where they attach the the most importance in in, in the process um, I can't imagine this year that that is not absolutely up there in terms of, of, of information because you know the, the the heads and teachers of the nursery schools as we know know that know their pupils far better than any assessments going to show really um, and we have to trust we have as, as heads of, of, of prep schools we have to trust in that in that knowledge and it's quite right that we do so. Um, but it does depend very much on the prep school itself. Because at Eaton Square, uh, we've always relied on looking at character and, and who the children are, um, rather than uh, sitting them through a very formalized academic entry process where there are schools I know who, who do it the other, the other way around. But, um, so my, my commentary is very much on what, what we're about. And we're about looking at the whole child um, seeing who they are, you know, what they enjoy doing, uh, and, and how they will add to our, our school. Um, and, and they can all bring something unique and, and wonderful and beautiful, you know, which is, which is them. And, and that comes from, from Lucinda or that comes from the head of the nursery in, in, in their report. Brilliant. Th thanks, Sebastian. We've, we've got Lucinda back online. So Houston, we, we no longer have a problem. Which is... Sorry. Our no, no, not at all. Out. <laughs> normally, normally me that has some sort of horrendous <laughs> technological gaffe. Um, uh, so the, the Lucinda, we were just talking a little bit about um, following on from what Sebastian said in his main talk, just about um, how the schools like his, who have some form of quote unquote assessment for their reception starters and how how they're managing that. So um, both just saying that you know the, the nursery heads input is you know even more important than in previous years, although it's always been a, the, the cornerstone. But I think parents are probably were until now less aware of it because they don't get to see that bit. That's done behind closed doors and they get to see the assessment, which obviously they're physically present for often. So that plays on their mind a little bit. So mm. great that um, both he and you through what you told us kind of hopefully alleviate some of that parent anxiety. Um, and um, I was a bit disturbed, Sebastian, to see in your, um, in your beautiful and, and very informative cleaning uh, documentation that Lego's no longer okay, which 
that, that I would find very difficult um, at school, both as a grown up and a child. Um, my, 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 my children would just not turn up. Part, part, um, of, part of this process has been um, uh, adapting. So um, actually, since that's gone out, we are now, we have got Lego. Uh, oh, we, we, we clean it after every session. So it's. Um, Good Lord. Uh, it's still there. It's all right. <laughs> Great news. Um, so the, a lot of questions we got in, in advance. Look, not all of them. Um, quite relevant to, to the age groups talking about today so forgive me I, if I hesitate a little bit I'm just whizzing through and, and um, uh, finding suitable ones. This is probably quite a tough one because I don't it's quite open-ended but I think it's to you in the first instance um, mm -hmm. uh, maybe for me actually but I, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna share it with you because it's quite <laughs> tricky um, I want to know which type of school is best if my three-year-old is non-verbal uh, however, that's as much detail as we're getting from that. But I, I, I'm going to adapt the question and suggest that, you know, perhaps this child is not yet at a nursery school and therefore hasn't had any formal instruction outside of parenting um, in English or perhaps is in a non-native English household. So maybe rather than what type of school is best, could you just tell us a little bit about how you might deal with that in terms of getting them to a nursery before reception where you would prioritise things and, and how they might deal with that at home to, to prepare either for second year of nursery or reception? Yeah, I think um, we have, we often actually have a lot of children who um, are bi or trilingual. Um, I'm sure Sebastian does as well at Eaton Square, you know, London's diverse. So we are quite used to dealing with children who don't speak English when they come to us. Um, it's not uncommon as well for children who have more than one language to speak later. So we often find that the children tend to not speak until around three anyway. Um, we cater for those children by putting them in uh, smaller groups. Um, we have visual timetables that to help them. We uh, and also just being around children is the probably the best thing that you can do for children learning to speak English because they very very quickly remarkably quickly learn um, to speak the language I mean we had uh, in the past we had a, twins who were Russian and they only spoke Russian to each other and within six weeks um, they were already conversing in English with their friends and that's why having no English at home so yeah we just by being in any um, nursery setting will benefit the child enormously with speech yeah, absolutely. And, and I always say that, you know, cl cliches are called cliches because, um, you know, they're, they're worth, <laughs> people have felt them necessary enough to keep saying. And the old cliche of, you know, the best thing for them is to be in an immersive language environment uh, is absolutely the most important thing. Um, mm. Couldn't be more important anyway, but particularly if English is not the main language at home and without being, you know, too tough on our, our international families, um, if, if, you know, the parents might not be speaking the level of English that their teachers are speaking at school and therefore you know that helps but it's always best to be learning from or hearing native speakers uh, as much as, as possible. Mm. Um, now there's lots of sort of questions about state school which I won't go into too much detail here but obviously just to all of our attendees um, we're sending out information from both our speakers and ourselves after the talk. Um, there are other talks which I think some of these questions will be more relevant to so please do look at our upcoming series. Also, please feel free to get in touch with, with me or my team um, about some of these specific questions, but that's exactly why we're, we're here. Um, so the next question, I, I'm gonna jump actually to one that was submitted during the, the talk today as well, because those are all came beforehand. This is quite an interesting one. So I understand COVID-19 um, has massive issues, but have you also noticed changes to the admissions due to the current Brexit activities? I mean, two things we really, everyone's sick of talking about. <laughs> we got rid of one with COVID and now Brexit, this is both we're back in one question, but you know, takes your mind off the pandemic. Um, have admissions waitlists suffered due to, did they suffer due to Brexit? And actually, I would like to ask both of you, are they suffering due to COVID? Um, we'll start with the, the nursery end. So Lucinda, perhaps you could give us your experiences so far on that issue. Um, I would say, Pre-Brexit, there was definitely, we definitely had families that relocated back home if they were European. Um, we definitely had a, a, a period where it was sort of radio silence. We didn't have much inquiry, many inquiries at all. Um, but actually recently, um, and again with COVID in the, in the initial lockdown, it was very quiet because I think everybody was just coming to terms with 
with being at home and lockdown. Mm. But now things have really picked up and we've had in the last week l several inquiries. So, um, yeah, it seems to be picking up. Um, I think as the world is waking up again, I think um, people are turning their mind to schools and admissions. And I mean, what we are finding um, is that, you know, back in the day, people would uh, register their child at birth and then they go on a waiting list. Whereas now we're finding that things happen really last minute. So we'll get a call from someone who's suddenly come over from America and they want to place their child sort of next term. So admissions tend to be a bit more um, hectic, shall I say, but um, we try and accommodate as many as we can. So it's a bit more last minute than it was, but yeah, no, things are definitely picking up, I think. Fabulous. And so, Sebastian, what, what, what sort of patterns have you noticed with, with both those kind of major geopolitical moves? I, I have to be careful not to say anything too political, don't I? Um, <laughs> as, as tempting as it is. Um, so I, pre pre Brexit, if we go back to then, uh, it was a very different London, central London. I mean, Young England and uh, Eaton Square are what a, a one minute cycle ride or one and a half scoot um, apart. So I suspect we're we're very much in, kind of influenced in in the same way by government uh, initiatives. Um, so pre-Brexit, it was it was very very busy uh, and and waiting lists as we as, as Lucinda just said, um, and then immediately Brexit was announced. Um, there was an absolutely tangible change then, uh, far more uncertainty, uh, and you know we had to adjust. Lucinda had to adjust. We, we more more reactive I think to people just dropping in and, and look, looking less far ahead um, and that really continued until relatively recently when, when the the final Brexit outcome was was decided and then that began to pick up and then of course Covid uh, stepped in its place and and with with Covid when it first arrived it was absolutely quiet I mean you know very very quiet mm -hmm. nothing happening really um, but in the last two weeks, three weeks, maybe two weeks, I think Lucinda might, 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 might agree. Um, there's been a lot more activity and, it, and it's beginning to bubble again. And we're seeing, we're seeing the inquiry side um, begin to develop. So I've, I've got no doubt that will continue over the next uh, few weeks and, and through the summer period, actually. Um, and, and, and then uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll return to some more no normality after that. Wonderful. Thank, thanks so much. Um, I mean, it's, um, yeah, I mean, just from our point of view um, at, at, um, at, well, with all of our businesses, but particularly with the Bonus McFarlane um, and the school show, the schools have, you know, are back to thinking about about the future and, and getting out there in front of people as and when that becomes more possible. But also everyone's very keen to explore things like this. And, and, and you know, I know, I know that, um, you know, the Eaton Square and the schools within that group have done a great series of, of webinars to keep their presence alive uh, in, the, in, the, in the marketplace. But we too, Bernice McFarlane, you know, things did go pretty quiet on the, on the telephones, but the last fortnight, three weeks has, has, I think, as you both sort of alluded to, you know, the world is kind of waking up again. I mean, my, my feeling is actually I'm just kind of sick of it, no matter how dangerous <laughs> it may or may not be to kind of get on with life. People are just going to get on with life because there's only so much kind of, you know, um, lockdown that any, any one of us can probably sort of put up with. Um, and also, you know, I mean, <laughs> I think very few parents might admit this as their main reason, but you know, if you're trying to run a business from home with Nerf bullets flying past your nose, you're probably keen to try and get the children back into school as fast as possible. Um, but obviously for their, the main reason being for, for all the reasons we've been talking about today, which is, you know, their development, their communication, you know, it's far too much to, to particularly two working parents. You, there's no way that they could possibly manage that even you know, even with the amazing efforts schools are making with the, with the online learning. And we're looking into uh, the summer holiday now, which might not feel, <laughs> many parents might not feel their children particularly need because they haven't been doing quite as much, uh, particularly the youngest, the nursery group. Um, so so it, all I would say is that um, the, generally the admissions of all age groups, to, and this is to the, the parents out there really, is that they've carried on. There have been a few opportunities hither and thither with Brexit and now with COVID, but you know it's such a strong, high quality, um, globally demanded um, 
uh, industry, the, the independent school system in, in the UK, that those opportunities, quote unquote, exist very briefly. And, um, you know, all schools, nurseries, um, um, Lucinda mentioned the, the WL phrase, waiting list, you know, that they all have them, they all use them. And, and from my perspective, speaking to, to um, uh, you know, uh, peers of Lucinda's and Sebastian's across the market, you know, yes, there's movement, there's lots of movements, but there aren't necessarily loads of extra places available. In fact, not, not at all, really. Um, so it's still very important to crack on, to do your best to ignore COVID, to keep communicating with the schools and, and the likes of Lucinda and Sebastian's institutions and you know, get in touch and apply because those processes are still operating at 100% with the same speed. Um, so actually quite a few of them we've noticed get, got in, getting faster because there's not so many elements that can be done. You can't do the in-person thing. It's much quicker to organize a digital meeting of some kind than it is to you know, chaperone 10 three and a half year olds into a strange building and try and get something useful out of them in an hour and a half while entertaining their extremely anxious parents um so you know it is important to to, to everybody listening that you, you you kind of you know carry on as much as you can in the sort of british way and, and keep calm uh, but do communicate with schools as much as you can the one you're interested in um and, and you know do, do do stretch yourself a little bit there may be new opportunities that you wouldn't have expected before at, at the last minute so don't assume things, contact the schools. Um, they are very much open uh, on the admissions front and generally speaking anyway, they've done a fantastic job across the market of, of staying in touch with everybody, which is wonderful to see. Um, right, looking back at our questions, um, this is probably a particularly good one for Lucinda and for the elder children, for, for Sebastian, a bit more of a, more of a sort of um, chat about what, what the school is doing. But Lucinda, what resources can parents use at home with, with I mean, I'm going to paraphrase this, but with, with nursery age children, because obviously the Zoom teaching for nursery age children is not quite as efficient, I imagine, as it is for year one up and up. Uh, I suppose we have encouraged parents to go outside in the weather, nice weather. We've done a lot of our, our topic in the summer term is nature. So we've encouraged the parents to go to their local parks or their gardens and look for mini beasts. Um, I get the children to count the stairs as they're going upstairs, looking at numbers around in the environment, shapes in the environment, um, sort of, I'm trying to think, um, we've had a lot of junk modelling uh, creations been sent in from uh, lots of parents who are collect madly collecting uh, the recycling materials. Uh, we have had children creating musical instruments from kitchen utensils um sort of every puzzles with the children turn taking games um uh what else have we done yeah cooking lots of cooking we did some the teachers did some incredible cooking uh demonstration activities for the children to, to um get in stages via zoom which worked quite well i imagine um, with the, and, yeah, story. Uh, i imagine with the fork did you not get quite a lot of toy story for <laughs> diversions rather than the the actual task <laughs> yeah i mean it has it has been definitely an online learning for this age group it, it is challenging which is why and also we were very aware that it requires a lot of parental um, input um, because you can't just sort of set an activity for the child to sort of go off and do on their own so it has been we have understood that particularly for parents who have both been working it has been it's been challenging but we tried to um, accommodate it as much as we can Great, thank you. Um, so, uh, I, generally, I was going to avoid the whole discussion about about sort of um, the fees uh, side of things because, frankly, it's just a necessity. But um, and everyone's doing what they can on on both sides. But this this question is, it's in that r world, but it's, it's slightly different because it's for parent new parents coming in. So, do you have any considerations in place for parents that have had their work financial circumstances changed due to COVID nineteen? And I think I'd like to, I'll limit that to parents who are already in the admissions process, so, so have applied to you, they're not part of your school. Um, I wondered if, um, Sebastian, you might start with that one. Yeah, it's a very, um, it's a very delicate subject and, and um, each family's in a unique situation really. Uh, so from, from the outset for the existing parents, we uh, reduced our fees and we reduced the nursery fees have been reduced by 50% uh, 
and the rest of the school by 25%. Um, we set up a hardship fund from day one uh, to support families who may need that support because obviously many have been affected by this. Um, and fantastically, you know, um, the, the, month, the, the fees paid by parents, in existing parents, uh, even with the reductions, and quite a large number decided to pay full fees in order for the excess to go to the hardship fund. Mm -hmm. So um, we've been very fortunate in that way with our, with our parent body. Um, <clears throat> for families coming in, of course, I, it, it's, uh, the, the question is, is relevant and valid. Um, and I, I suspect that, that that is a conversation be it, be it with us or any other school probably, or with Lucinda, um, that if, if that family embarked on the process and, and things have now changed, which may well be the case, um, we would need to sit down with them and talk about it um, and, and try and uh, see, see how, how the land lies in the future really. And, and that's, I think, I think all we can do at this, at this point, but I would encourage whoever put the question in, and there probably are others thinking it, um, that they must, get in touch with the school they've applied to or schools uh, and have that conversation because each school will be different uh, in terms of what, what they can do. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Sebastian. It is, it is a really sensitive subject and one that I suppose um, from our point of view, we felt a lot of activity around, uh, I'm sure the schools <laughs> even more so at the beginning. Um, all I'd like to say to everybody is that, you know, as I said briefly uh, earlier, schools private schools no matter how they're owned uh, the margins are incredibly fine in the in the world of um, you know health and safety and safeguarding and all the good things that we should have in place for institutions with our children in it during the day um, you know the expense of ticking those boxes is phenomenal let alone you know by, um, the, 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 the money required to, to, to find the best teachers and the best head teachers and all of these sorts of things so the pressure on the schools to all these parents who may be feeling a little hard done by the pressure is immense. And I think you have to, as Sebastian said, the most important thing, speak to your school. There is no sort of, you know, centralized um, uh, management within the independent sector of this sort of stuff. Uh, and, and explain your situation if it indeed, it, you know, it, you, you are in a really tough situation. Um, because you'd be amazed at the, the generosity of other parents that have allowed many schools like Sebastian's to, to help where possible. And these schools have always been historically, you know, very important communities and they have a wonderful history in the independent sector of looking after um, uh, their, their own communities as best they can. Um, and when normal service resumes, as we know, looking after, um, you know, charities within their communities, which is a major part of the ethos of all independent schools. So um, let's hope we can get back to that as soon as possible. But it, it is something for each individual school. Um, so please, please do keep your communications with your your school management um, uh, live and vibrant. The, I am going to slightly wind down now because um, it's 11.30, it's the magic hour mark. Um, and um, despite having less students, I'm sure Sebastian and Lucinda have got plenty to be getting on with. Um, Sebastian, Lucinda, thank you so much for giving your time so, so easily this morning and brilliant to have all that information. And, I, and I'm sure our listeners will agree that, um, you know, hopefully that's reduced anxiety across the board a little bit. Pleasure. 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 Do take care. Thank you everyone else for coming Thanks. and see you at the next webinar.